body bags were Horlies. What's up, y'all? W Doubles at you again. Another week on the body bags. Um, got a flick from 1987 for y'all. And that is A Return to Salem's Lot. Of course, a uh, sequel to Salem's Lot. Um, of course, this is not written by Stephen King. He only wrote the original uh, Salem's Lot. And uh, Larry Cohen actually wrote, wrote directed this uh, adaptation, I guess, or, uh, or this film, <clears throat> uh, Return to Salem Lot, which is loosely based on the uh, original Salem Lot, as I mentioned by Stephen King. And I mean loosely. This is uh, a shockingly different movie than the uh, Salem, or even the Salem's Lot miniseries, or even the book for that matter. Um, the only really uh, similarity between the two is the setting of being in Salem's Lot. <clears throat> in my opinion, uh, the major one. Um, but the film opens and follows uh, an anthropologist played by Michael Morty. I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing uh, his name. Uh, guy's been in the stuff. Uh, Cue the Winged Serpent. It's Alive 3. Uh, a lot of horror stuff. So recognizable horror guy there. Um, and his son, who's a wisecracking, uh, just a smart-ass little kid, but I found him pretty enjoyable in this. He's pretty funny, uh, just smoking cigarettes and cussing and just being a little hellion. Uh, so their uh, father-son relationship is uh, dynamic and funny off the bat. Um, and that's as far as really the humor of the flick goes, though. It, it plays off as a serious horror film. Um... The anthropologist is returning to, uh, I believe, his aunt's hometown. He had fond memories of, and that was uh, Salem's Lot. Um, so he's just kind of going back there to, I guess, relive the past kind of thing. And he ends up inheriting his, uh, like I said, I believe it's his aunt, um, her home, which is like a beat-down house um, in the town of now known as Jerusalem's Lot. They've changed the name Salem's Lot, maybe to change. Uh, images or uh, stigmatisms that might have been associated with Salem's Lot. So yeah, gets off the town, a uh, very small town, um, but it feels very isolated and almost vacant. Uh, not many, many people out during the days. Uh, there's two constables that they uh, end up passing and another character who's played by the legendary Samuel Fuller, of course writer and director. Um, Hollywood fame over the years does an awesome job in his role um, who ends up being a Nazi hunter slash vampire hunter um, yeah so they end up crossing paths but like I said very isolated town um, from the start um, that being said I, the atmosphere could have been heavier that was only one of my major complaints uh, just uh, this film was under kind of underwhelming as far as the horror suspense uh, department goes. Re I mean, really cool setting, cool effects, great gore when it happens, uh, pretty decent amount of gore, you got your nudity, not much complaints there, um, but just when it comes down to the scares and the actual look of the vampires, um, not very frightening in my opinion, and especially the original Salem's Lot, I found the... Uh, the original Salem's Lot, the vampires had that Nosferatu look, which is much scarier in my opinion. Um, the vampires do look cool in this, don't get me wrong. Uh, you can see one up here in the corner. Um, you know, kind of creepy bat-like vampire in your own right, not to give too much away. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's as far as I want to go to in the plot. Like I said, uh, Anthropologist goes back to a small town. Um, he's offered to write a book for these um, weird cult-like people that are considered vampires and they they trust him because he's uh, not very judgmental to him, especially at first, and uh, ends up writing a book for him. Of course, um, shit's going to hit the fan and you know get it a little more interesting than that. Um, said that the pacing could have been amped up just a little bit and just the intensity of the atmosphere would would be how I would describe it. Um, but like I said, everything else, the gore department was 
was fun, really cool, like melting, uh, pulling blood stuff, you know, reminiscent of stuff in this, the, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, the stuff, the, the horror film, um, but just, just cool stuff like that, um, I dug the score a lot, really synthesizer, 80s, um, I'm a sucker for that shit, um, maybe slightly repetitive, you know, wasn't much variance to it, but I did like the main hook and, uh, score that was used throughout the film. So a cool setting that kind of, uh, kind of combines Village of the Dam, Twins Peak, and maybe the original Salem's Lot, uh, so a lot different direction in this one, but, uh, I like what Larry Cohen did with it, um, undermentioned horror sequel, in my opinion, uh, a fun little one from the 80s. Um, that's about it as far as I can uh, <laughs> figure, you guys. Uh, but until next week, I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, I give this one a solid uh, 7 out of 10, by the way. So, uh, just a fun little 80s one. <clears throat> I'd say check it out. So, this is, of course, released by Warner Warner Archive, Warner Archive Series. Um, Warner Archive Collection really releases some solid stuff. You know, Killer Party, one of my all-time favorites. And uh, Razorback, they got some cool horror stuff they release. Uh, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, the original. Um, but yeah, as always, y'all, appreciate y'all watching. Till next week, peace.